This is the Steam Deck, the handheld gaming device from Valve that has taken the world by storm. Psst. And tell them about how it runs Linux. Yeah, I was going to get to that. So yeah, it runs Linux, which means a lot of your games are going to have to run on the Proton layer. Which... Hey, what about desktop mode? Don't forget to mention that. Dude, I'm getting to that. Relax. So yeah, it does have a desktop environment. If you want to run it as a desktop system, you totally can. You're good. Keep going. So yeah, uh, it has a desktop environment, which is a Linux-based desktop environment. It's Arch, by the way. Oh my God, do you want to do the video? I mean, I will. Okay, do it. Come on, sit down, do it. Get in front of the camera. Tell the people all about the Steam Deck. I don't care, come get me when you're done. So yeah, you all know about the Steam Deck. It's a gaming handheld device from Valve with an eight core custom AMD CPU, 16 gigabytes of RAM and built-in Radeon RDNA graphics. Obviously it's designed and marketed as a gaming handheld, but Valve did include a plasma desktop environment that essentially turns this device into some kind of desktop laptop, PSP, Frankenstein hybrid thing. For this video, we're going to probably do the opposite of what Steam designed this thing for. We are going to approach a female with it. We are going to see if we can turn it into a makeshift home server. Spoiler alert, I've already tried and there are some good things about it, but obviously it's not perfect. Let's start out with the obvious question. If you wanna run it as a home server, then why not install a real server hypervisor OS like TrueNAS Scale or Proxmox or Unraid or whatever? Well, I tried and none of them worked. I got partially through the installation process and all of them just failed. Now, I'm not smart enough to know why and maybe you're watching this sometime in the future where we figured out how to do this, but as of mid-April of 2022, it didn't work. So we are stuck with the regular old Plasma Arch Linux desktop, which isn't terrible. As someone who has never really used Arch, by the way, for any extended period, obviously since I'm getting married in less than a month, the environment wasn't really that different. You use Pac-Man instead of apt, you have different repositories, you compile your own source code for the packages if you wanna go that route, but for the most part, it's just Linux. Now with all that out of the way, what can we actually do? Well, for most home servers, you're going to want to run some services like Plex or Nextcloud, Sonar, Radar, Nginx Proxy Manager, maybe spin up a website with WordPress, whatever. For this, we will be using our Lord and Savior, Docker. First step, obviously, is to install Docker, which is easy using Pac-Man. Just run a single command and enable it using systemctl and you're ready to go. From there, you can use it like you normally would, which for me means to install Portainer. Luckily, this is also easy. It's a two-liner and boom, you're ready to go. Now you're ready to download your favorite images and spin up some containers. Here's the part where I say, but, but there isn't a but. It's actually a pretty smooth experience on here. The only downside is that for some reason, Docker Compose isn't installed with the initial Docker or Portainer install, so you'll have to manually install that. So let's hop into my Portainer instance and take a look at what we have running on here. So I guess I should turn it on, right? <sighs> Lovely. All right, here we are in my Portainer instance. You can see I have a couple of containers running here. Uh, first off, you will see something easy like file browser. So I installed that very simple using the app templates. You can go into here, go down and find file browser. It's literally like a one click install. And then once you have that up and running, you can simply go to the interface and boom, just like that file sharing service set up and ready to go. From here, we can create directories. We can add files to those directories. Uh huh. And just like that, we have a place to store a bunch of files. Now you can also share files really easily using File Browser, which is why I'm a huge fan of this service. So you can go in here, select the file, go over here to share, 
And then you can specify how many hours you wanna share it for. So if you wanna share this for a day, okay, why'd you do that? Uh, you can set a password if you want. This is just telling me it's not secure since I'm not using HTTPS right now, but that is okay. And click share. Once that's done, boom. We have a shareable link that we can copy, send to all of our friends, and assuming this is exposed to the outside world, then easy file sharing. The file browser itself isn't really difficult to run or anything, so I wanted to test it a little bit. So I installed Plex. And again, pretty easy to install. There isn't a default template for this, but I have a custom one. I will link this down in the description below. It's really, really basic, so it's not like it's anything complicated, but um, we are using the regular Linux server Plex image, and we are passing through two locations. So we have one for the initial config, and then where you're storing the media will be passed through as the media folder. And honestly, like I said, there's not much to it. Once you have it deployed and up and running, you can go to the Plex site, and we have our Plex server. And testing this out on my phone, I looked down like I was holding my phone, but it's actually on the teleprompter, but Testing this out on my phone, it did perform very well. Now this is over the local network, so it's not having to handle any heavy transcoding or anything. But I mean, again, remember what we're working with. This is a Steam Deck. This isn't a home server grade system with actual server grade hardware in it. It's a freaking portable souped up Nintendo Switch. It works. I, I don't know what else to say about it. I'm not gonna stress test this with heavy transcoding because honestly, if you're looking to have a Plex server, you are not going to run it on a Steam Deck for multiple reasons. But if you wanna play around with it, it works. Now, another thing is yes, the Steam Deck is designed to play games, but can it host games? Well, it can. We are hosting a Minecraft server on the Steam Deck. So again, actually this isn't a custom template. I actually use Docker Compose. Remember how I mentioned before that we had to manually install Docker Compose? Well, I ran through that whole process. I have an entire video dedicated to doing this. I will link that up here, but it essentially boils down to creating a Docker Compose file and setting up some custom volumes and then running the simple docker compose up the command and you have a Minecraft server spun up and ready to go. So if you're interested in knowing how to manually set up a Minecraft server using Docker, then again, check that video out. But the performance is pretty good on it. I did test it over my local network and it was running Minecraft perfectly fine. So again, would I recommend to do this specifically to host a Minecraft server or to run Plex? No, but it is cool that you can do it on a gaming handheld device, which is what I'm basically showing you today. Now, obviously you can run whatever you want, but I just picked a few things that I personally run to test it out. So yeah, we have some services running with lots of room to spare, but Docker does not a home server make. I'm sure you heard my woes from before about trying to get a different OS installed, and you probably thought, well, maybe you can virtualize them. Yeah, that's what I thought too. So I installed Vert Manager in an attempt to spin up some VMs with KVM and no dice. I tried some easy ones like Ubuntu and Windows 10 with no luck. They initially looked like they'd install, but both of them crapped out and crash during the VM install process. So let's just assume at this point, we are stuck with the packaged Arch desktop environment. Yes, I know you can install Windows on here, but there's like a thousand videos out there of doing that. Now at the home server, you're going to want some file storage for all your anime. In this case, it's a bit more tricky than just throwing some regular hard drives on a server. You see, the Steam Deck has two ways you can go about expanding storage. The first and probably easiest is to simply utilize the built-in micro SD card slot. Feel free to throw a one terabyte SD card in there and boom, you're good to go. Obviously it's an SD card, so it's not gonna be the fastest or the most reliable, but it'll work in a pinch. The second option is to hook up a USB solution. For this, you'll need a USB-C adapter or dock since the Steam Deck only has a single USB-C port that is used for power as well as input. Now, this is a 10 gigabit per second port, so you do have quite a bit of bandwidth to work with. 
which USB storage solution you go with is completely up to you. You can throw a thumb drive in there, a single external SSD, a powered multi-bay hard drive dock. The options are plentiful. My God, train. There was literally just one like 30 minutes ago. What are you guys doing? For the most part, it's not the best idea to run RAID on USB connected drives, but if you want to go that route and build up a basic MDADM setup, then you certainly can. Personally, I wouldn't recommend running anything super important on the Steam Deck anyway, so having a RAID setup isn't really a priority of mine, but my use case isn't yours, and you may want to slay the RAID monster. So yeah, there's our little portable Steam Deck home server setup. Is it perfect? Absolutely not. Would I recommend you do this? Probably not. While it is pretty cool to have a low power, battery powered home server with a built-in debug console, you can get a much better experience with a regular desktop PC that will cost less. So no, don't go out and buy a Steam Deck to use as a home server just because you saw some bald dude on YouTube do it. But if you already have one and want to mess around with Arch and install some services, then it's certainly good at that. Let me know down in the comments if you do something like this and why you're a degenerate like me. All right, it is time for comment of the week. This one comes on my 32 core 64 thread home server mistake. And this comment comes from John Johnson who says, electricity is so expensive in the UK now that I can't justify having such a beefy CPU idling most of the time. We actually downgraded uh, to a 4570T, which is a low power i5, definitely recommended. The reduction in power consumption is dramatic, but performance wise, it's not that noticeable. I feel maybe Plex streams take a few seconds longer to buffer the initial transcode, but I've not done a direct comparison. So yeah, You'll see people build servers with crap ton of cores and with large power draws, but at the end of the day, everybody's use case is different. If you don't need that much power, you don't need to be producing that much heat or drawing that much electricity and paying a large electricity bill. So if your demands are low, then go with a low power CPU. And in the long run, you will certainly be thankful that you went with that over a ridiculously power hungry, stupid 32 core 64 thread setup like I did. But thank you, Mr. John Johnson for the comment. I hope electricity prices over in the UK start to go down a bit. All right, that was my experience with attempting to set up my Steam Deck as a home server. Overall, I think it's pretty solid, but certainly won't replace your regular setup. If you enjoyed the video, then feel free to drop a like. If you like my shirt or the way I say arch, by the way, then feel free to subscribe. I wanna give a huge shout out to my YouTube members and Patreons who are the coolest dudes around and were voted most likely to support a mediocre YouTuber in high school. I'm glad you guys are living up to expectations. It warms my heart, but that's it. If you're still around, then I appreciate it. Thank you so much for watching, and I will see you in the next one.